So, but I, but hmm. let's assume the monkey's not just trying to get away because I think if monkey wants to get away, monkey's gone. But let's sure. say monkey's got a little fight in him. Monkey wants this battle. He can make it happen. You think? Well, monkey I, can use tools. I was gonna say monkey could pick up sticks. Yeah, monkey could um, uh, launch an aerial attack. You know, like dog can't do that. Monkeys like to throw poop. Oh, blinding, blind the <laughs> eyes. Then you got free reign. We've gone uh, way down a rabbit hole here. I mean, uh, but hey, it's great clickbait. Dog versus monkey. <laughs> Well, well, howdy, y'all. You're listening to the Day Tripper Podcast. It's September 2023. I'm Chet Garner, and uh, we're doing the thing. We're talking Texas. Uh, joining me over here is Daniel Meese, hey, hey, hey. co-host extraordinaire. Y'all know him. Y'all love him. Um, <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about uh, right off the jump. Remember, the way you can support us is like, subscribe, review. All the things really help. And also, comment. Like oh, on the please, YouTube on. or send them in because we need questions. We need banter, all those great things that you guys are, uh, you know, it's a, this is a two way street. All right. Absolutely. It's not just us talking. You turn it on in your earbuds to zone out the people you don't want to hear at work. No, they gave us the content. All right. Yeah, that's right. It all comes from you people. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's just a reminder. Okay. But let's, let's jump in sponsor spot. We got to thank our sponsor on this one. All right, Daniel, how excited okay. are you about Paris 2024? Do you even know what's happening in Paris in 2024? I was, I was waiting for you to say something that I knew, and I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Paris 2024, It's yes! the Summer Olympics! Oh, the Summer yeah. Olympics. Okay. I didn't know they were in Paris. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're coming up. Next, next summer, we're getting uh, another set of Olympics, which feels weird. The COVID year, Tokyo 2020 was 2021, oh, I think. It Maybe was so 22. strange. Uh, yeah, so we're trying to get back on track. I want to do it. Let's get the train go. back I'm on track. I'm going. Okay, <laughs> so what's your favorite <laughs> Olympic sport when, uh, you, when you dial in? With Summer Olympics. Summer Olympics. Uh, I like watching track. Okay. It's, oh, you know, fun. there's so many things. I love the field events and stuff, but to be able yeah. to watch, you know, the 200 oh, or the dude. 400. Like watching right. the fastest man in when the world. Bolt the was doing that 100, like just smoking everybody. Heck yeah. He'd look back and laugh at them. Oh, oh man. Those were good years. I love good it. Good years. I love it. Um, also, I, I love the beach volleyball. That, yeah. but that I, I I can watch beach volleyball, uh, and then I think America's favorite women's gymnastics. It's hard to beat that. that I mean, we've watched yeah. that so much. You I think love, of I like, love it too. I mean, all of the uh, underdog stories yes. throughout the years. You and, get enraptured by these people. You feel like you've got an inv- a vested interest with, yeah. right? Because you've watched them grow up, and you're like, okay, this is a you know Olympic. This is their third, fourth Olympics. You yeah. know, how much longer can they do this? So. Uh, did you know that Olympic gymnasts Carly Patterson and Nastia Lukin both grew up in Collin County, Texas? I had no clue. Dun, 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 dun. Nastia All right. Lukin, Connie, Carly, and, County. And, and, That's... Yeah, yeah, and Carly Patterson. So these were the all-around gymni- gymnastics gold medalists in twenty in 2004 and 2008, respectively. Yeah. They both trained with Nastia's father at a gym in Plano, only the second and third American women to ever win gold medals in gymnastics. Isn't that wild? That's amazing. I remember. You remember watching them on the floor? Oh, absolutely. It was good television. And they're <laughs> Texans, all right? So they're Texans. And you can learn about them and other famous Collin County residents at the new exhibit at the Collin County History Museum in McKinney. It's called Created in Collin County. It highlights all things wonderful from Collin County. Entertainers, athletes, products, businesses, innovation, all sorts of stuff. We made an episode at this museum. It's really great. Downtown McKinney. It's free on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. All right. You can learn more at collincountyhistorymuseum.com. McKinney is fun. It's a good, it's a great museum. And it's still going to be stinking hot. So go <laughs> go hide out in a museum. Learn a little bit. All right. Thanks, Collin County, for supporting our podcast. Uh, congrats, Daniel. Congrats to all the listeners. Um, you have made it through the hottest summer ever in Texas. It's did, hard to believe. Did it feel ho- like the hottest summer ever? Um, well, I tried to stay inside most yeah. of it. So <laughs> anytime we're out shooting but, episodes, like, yes, it does. Dude, we, we, we had some burners. We did. Um, McGregor most recently. Oh gosh, that was so hot. But like it, to me, it felt like the hottest summer. It's not just like something I see on paper. It it was legitimately like 
you go out, you get the blow dryer in your oh, face. Man. Just ah. Uh. You know, have you noticed like okay, you have parked somewhere for a while, you go out in the parking lot, get in your vehicle, and you look at the temperature and it's like, oh, it's like 112, and you're like, eh, it's because it's been sitting here. <laughs> Then you drive off and it's been at 112 <laughs> for like the last 20 minutes. It You're doesn't like, go down. It's actually 112. Oh man. Oh man. There were records set all over. Uh, here in Austin, we had 45 consecutive days over 100, and then the record stopped man. at the very end of August. 45. That beat the previous record of 27. So like that's pretty darn it close to doubling it. Yeah. And that's consecutive days. We've already passed the most. Days over 100 in a year. That got blown away a while back. So, congratulations. It is a feat Yay. of Texas size proportions. <laughs> All right. So, fall is coming up. I think there's a r- raging debate on what's people's favorite season. And fall is probably the number one contender. Hands down for me. I know I'm for fall. you. I love fall. I'm not fall. I love what? fall, but that's not my favorite. I mean, is it spring? Yeah, it's it's that crossover. It's it's April, May, June. That's mine. Okay. So it's like late spring, early summer. That's that's my <laughs> zone right there. Uh, you know, the the years winding up at school with the kids. You're you're planning summer, then you get into summer. Swimming holes are full. The days are long. Th- that's the best season for me. And see, for me, I like the same kind of thing, but on the opposite side of the year, because we're getting into the cool. We're getting into the okay. holidays. Okay, right, you get those little tastes of Christmas the cold. Christmas is around the corner. Crispy. Oh, no. <laughs> You've already decorated, most likely. Hey, Daniel. I will say this. I hate pumpkin spice lattes and all that <laughs> junk, so forget it. Uh, I mean, I do dig. I love Halloween. I mean, if you Halloween's watch the day, you, you know I love dressing up in costumes. Absolutely. That's a great holiday. Um, I love uh, my, 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 Thanksgiving. 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 Football, Family, the crispy weather, but you just said the number one reason Absolutely. I love fall. It's football. It's football, baby. Football is back. All right, so September's here. This kicks off the month of football, but we have no idea where the season is going, which makes it, you know, like pretty darn interesting. Um, I, I've got some some predictions here, oh, wait, and we're going to get. Are we talking college or pro? Both. Okay. And we're going to get to December, and we're going to go back, and we're going to laugh at exactly what happened. That's maybe January, how it goes. right? Okay. So, um, oh, no. the Dallas Cowboys, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Dallas Cowboys, you want to guess what their percentage chance of winning the Super Bowl is? The, winning the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Go all the way. Well, am I saying it like as an optimistic As a percentage? Or? Yes. Yes, as a fan. Uh, that's I, my team, I'm gonna, your team. Yeah, maybe like 20-something percent. Oh, way overshot it, brother. Are you kidding? It's 5%. Holy but that's Vegas. God. I told you I was being optimistic. I'm, I'm the optimistic Cowboys fan. Like it, you want to punch at the party? Like it's our year. Yes, this is it. We got it's like our year. I know last year was also our year, and the year before that. But 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 there's reasons it didn't work out. This is our year. Five percent. Every Cowboys fan is laughing with me because or crying with me rather because <laughs> we always say that. But we got a really good team this year. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll we'll see. So I mean, we're not even picked to win our division because no, we're, we're in not. there with the Eagles. The, Eagles are going to be a powerhouse. We'll see. Um, you, uh, Eagles have a 14% chance of winning the Super Bowl. But you know who has the best chance overall? Who? It's Dynastyville. Yeah. Kansas City Chiefs, baby. Yeah. Led by a Texan, Patrick Mahomes. So, can't get too mad at that. I was going to say, like, yeah, you, you can't not I love like watching him. Patty Mc, he's, McHolmes. He's good. Uh, it's, it's cool. So, White House, Texas boy, went to Texas Tech. Reckham Tech, and uh, he's fun to watch. Gosh, he's so dynamic. So they got the best chance to win. Texans have literally zero <laughs> percent chance to win. Sorry, Houston, um, you're predicted to go third in the AFC South. And I love watching the Texans. I cheer for the Texans, but it seems to be the Chiefs' year. Unless I mean, if Patrick Mahomes goes down, then that's just done. He's young. But if that's going to be around got, for a while, yeah, no. Ugh. If you look at his age, like 26, 27, it's like. Oh! I've done nothing with my life. Oh, man. No. All right. Okay. So that's that's pros. Yeah. So I'm only talking about Texas teams. So here we go. Jumping into the Big 12. Who's predicted to win the Big 12? UT, baby. There you go, baby. Texas should win the Big 12. We hope it's the last year we're in the Big 12. We're How ranked- awesome would that be to win it your last Dude, year? Just a big finger in the wound as we leave. <laughs> I'm I'm sad and distressed about the end of the Big Twelve. I that you know I went to UT during and Baylor during the Big Twelve, so yeah. I was like, 
that I, I don't want to see it go where it's going. College it, football it hasn't felt the same in a while. Though. Yeah, and then it's going to be totally different. Like the Pac-12 is, you see, it's fallen apart. Yeah, it's gone. Oh yeah. Big Ten is going to be something strange with USC and UCLA, and then Big Twelve is going to stay relevant because they're adding a whole bunch of teams as well. Yeah, they're going to have more. So, than 12 now. but you know, it's just not the same. I, I'm excited about getting to beat A and M again. That's going to be fun. That'll be a fun game to watch. Um, okay, uh, other predictions to possibly win the Big Twelve: Tech, TCU, and Baylor all have a good chance. They could. It could all be right. the year. All right. Uh, Texas is ranked eleventh. Preseason rankings don't matter that much. TCU is ranked seventeenth. So wow. I mean TCU, they're coming. I mean they they made it to the national. They've shown championship, what they can actually so, do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean they lost their quarterback, so we'll see. That Max Dugan's gone. That's going to be the biggest question mark for TCU. Sure, I'm sure the rest of the team looks great. All right, moving into high school. Thank you, Dave Campbell. These are the two teams predicted to go to the state championship game. All right, and there's a bunch of them. But Wait, you talk, what division are we talking? All about? of them. We're going to go down oh, okay. from the wow. top. Okay. All right. So we go from one A all the way to six A. Okay. But then there's two divisions within each of those. I know. It should be twelve A. A while. I don't know. So <laughs> anyway, we're just going to shout them off too. So. At, at, at the top of the top, this is uh, 6A Division One, Duncanville versus Galena Park, North Shore. All right? All right. 6A Division Two, DeSoto versus Austin Vandergriff. Okay. Uh, 5A Division One, Alito College Station will play. 5A Division Two, Melissa and Fort Bend Marshall. 4A Division One, China Spring versus Bernie. Sounds like a fun game to me. I don't know why. Right. Uh, 4A Division Two, <laughs> the land of Bernie, Carthage. <laughs> sort of Bernie, the movie. Yeah, Bernie, yeah. the movie. Uh, Carthage versus Silsby. We have a Silsby story later for y'all. Uh, 3A Brock versus Franklin. 3A Division Two, Canadian versus Harmony. 2A Division One, Holly versus Refurio. Uh, 2A Division Two, Albany versus Mart. 1A Division One, Westbrook versus Gordon. 1A Division Two, Benjamin versus Oglesby. Wow. Boom. Georgetown's not on the list. I didn't hear Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill's not on the list. Uh, I mean, they were on the list. They're predicted to go pretty far into the playoffs. So sure. is my alma mater, Port Natchez Groves, who yeah, played for the state really championship last year. I didn't hear them. Okay. And so we will see. Yeah. Preseason rankings don't amount to nah. beans. So anyway, but I'm pumped about football. Football's very, awesome. very pumped. Uh, it's going to be a big, big year. Um, we'll see if Quinn Ewers can pull this off. We'll Is see. it going to be Quinn Ewers? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, I, yeah. I mean, I think. All right, you, UT people or people don't give a rip about football. I promise, we're almost done with this. But you know, <laughs> UT recruited Arch Manning. Yes, nephew. Listen of to the name, and Eli Arch, Arch Manning. Manning. Dun, 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 dun. He already has a, a card. Uh, he partnered n- name, image, likeness with Panini to make a one of one card that's autographed. It's already auctioned off for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh my God. It went to a charity. So, okay. but he's, I mean, just stepping into Texas, he's already got millions yeah. of dollars in deals. That's changed college football a lot. That's it a whole has. other rabbit trail we can go down, but we're not going to. So, Arch Manning, heir apparent. Archie Manning's grandson Mm -hmm. is at Texas battling out for the number one spot with Quinn Ewers. Both five-star recruits, best quarterbacks in the nation when they came out of high school, and they're in a battle royale. But I think it's settled. Quinn's got the job. Arch might redshirt. He might redshirt. We'll see. I'm going to lower my expectations and just go with the flow. We're we're just going to sit back and enjoy some football. That's what we're going to do. All right, Daniel. We'll move off of football for everybody. What's what's been going on lately in the life of Daniel Meesey? Oh, Chet. Uh Uh-oh. I've got news, Chet. What? Uh, What? Oh, what is it? I'm scared. Oh, no. Of? We're getting a cat. No, Daniel. Why? I don't know. What did you? Yeah, huh? Yeah. I'm outnumbered. This is the, this is the females in, in your women. house. Wait. Okay. I've 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 known you to go through three dogs, two dogs, two dogs. I, quickly. We've had and then multiple. and then you try. Now I'm not a cat person at all. I need an animal I, that shows me love I'm not and affection. a cat person either. Okay, but cats are easier than dogs because they just don't even give. I a have crap. a cat allergy. Oh, but, well. What the? Why? What the, I, how? Apparently, there's some Daniel. cats that are not hypoallergenic, but they have less of the FEL D1 protein. Oh and, no! Uh, yeah, I'm hearing all kinds of research. You know, for my I think you can get immune if you eat more of it. 
So if you, oh, you really? know, yeah, you can really? eat the cat. Eat more cat? It helps. Yeah, eat, it helps with cat. the immunities. Okay. So I'm going to start building that, that up. Really. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I maybe don't, the third or fourth cat will be a keeper. You need to start eating them. Oh, Lord, help I us. I don't know, man. Daniel, I, why? I, why? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I care about my family, and I love my children. And uh, and you're a softy, brother. I, I am. Just I am. putty in their hands. I, I don't know. My <laughs> my life is falling apart. <laughs> and um, I mean, maybe the cat will be cool. I just talked to someone who who paid thousands of dollars for a cat and it i saw, i thought why <laughs> then there's like free kittens by the side of the road oh, yeah. and all cats look the same i know that's going to offend some people like i can't tell the difference between a, any any i mean a bobcat and a mountain lion different but like house cat to house cat yeah it's just different shades of the same well color. and i was all for that i was like well if you're going to get a cat get a free, free cat one. but once we started talking about well these are more oh, hypoallergenic yeah, than yeah, others yeah, and yeah, this yeah. and that. We had to go down that. We had to go down that, Robert. Yeah, so. the, We're um, looking at Siamese cats. That's what you're getting? I, th I think it's a Siamese cat. Oh, y'all watch Also too, called a Thai cat now. Yeah, too much uh, Lady and the Tramp. I know. They're evil. I've, wa I, I've watched Lady and the Tramp. I know. You don't get Siamese cats. They you do know. terrible things and frame the dog. I And now they're even telling me, like, well, you can't get one. You got to get two. I'm like, I'm not getting two. <laughs> I don't even want to get one. I think that's how my girls do it now. Yeah. Where they, they're like, they'll ask for the moon, and then they, they accept, like, you know, down here. They, those aren't those weird hairless ones. That's what Jordan wants. Jordan no, wants a hairless a those sphinx. Those things are... They, it's, it's a sphinx. That, oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, like the it's Egyptians. Sphinx. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they don't have hair. Dude, those things like are straight out of a You know nightmare. how much those cost? I have no clue. Like four or five grand. Oh, Daniel. I'm not doing that. No, okay. I'm not doing that. Look, get a free kitten. My friends who paid thousands, it was a cat that's going to be like 45 pounds. I go, what? And I they, they pulled up a picture a and showed me. It looks like. That's bigger than the bobcat. A, just, it looks like you gave the magic mushrooms from Alice in Wonderland <laughs> to a normal cat. So it's like normal, <laughs> normal proportions. It just went bloop. <laughs> just. I don't know. Okay. So I, I couldn't even tell you what they're called. Maybe the viewers know. Um, oh, Daniel, you're in for it. I, we, people can stay tuned to see exactly how that works out for you. I I don't have the words, Chad. <laughs> I, I just, I don't have the oh, words. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is all. If people new, have advice for what to do when you have a new cat, please let us know. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Besides eat it. That's um, just my advice. I don't think that they're going to like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll okay. This goes. Well, good luck to you, brother. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> oh, man. So this past month, we were running a contest, and we had a winner. Yes, we did. Temple, Texas. Temple, Brought Texas. home the gold, so we'll be filming a season finale there sometime yeah. in the spring, probably. Yep. We we're going to do it this fall, and fall got busy, so we're going to do it in the spring. Getting lots it, of good emails, though. It'll be good. Oh, dude, we got a lot of recommendations. Places like Jody's, which is an old-school diner that's Getting been around lots of forever. Emails. Go to the Puts hospital. barbecue. Oh, yeah. Go to the hospital. To, it's everybody's one, saying go to the hospital. Guys. Hey, the episode might lead us there. Chet falls off a mountain bike. We might see that <laughs> that's, hospital. Yeah, that's likely. Uh, um, so <laughs> the the this is cool though. The coolest thing I did last month, I got to go and judge H E B's quest for Texas best. Yeah. So those who shop at H E B might have seen this little seal that they put on Texas made products called Quest for Texas Best Winner. And what it is, it is a contest where H E B tries to identify and then basically honor the best mom-and-pop businesses across the state. So these are things that HEB could carry, but hasn't yet. And they're I, they're going out, scouring all of Texas. People are submitting products. They got like 600-something submissions. And then the top 10 get invited to this multi-day extravaganza in Dallas. Yeah. And I got to be on this panel of judges of all the HEB head honchos. Uh, and we, we got b sales pitches. It felt like Shark Tank. Yeah, but uh, with people, but of course, we're not investing, just giving away checks. And the winner was a um, like a microwavable pho bowl. So Vietnamese pho made in Houston. It's called pho licious, and it is <laughs> delicious, man. It is so good. And so they you microwave it. It's like you know, it'll be in the ramen section. Yeah, but it tasted. It didn't taste like microwave stuff. They got this little tea bag of spices that you put in it, and all this, That's all cool. this stuff. Then it, it was great. Um, so found out about some really cool Texas companies and man, Texans are so, they're just awesome. 
Texas. There's a awesome. company in Jasper called Ahua. Ahua. Uh, they are uh, making aguas frescas. So like uh, Mexican aguas frescas. Those are okay. usually, yeah. you know, they're usually in those big old jugs and they got the ladle. They made a sparkling canned version of aguas frescas. It's delicious. Oh, wow. And so they were one of the winners as well. So good. So good. There was a uh, a a um, yogurt company called Arma that from the time it comes out of the cow's teat to <laughs> the time it is uh, packaged is less than twenty four hours. Like that is it out in yogurt. Boom. So, still has essence of the teat. It still does little little bits. They try to get them off. They have machines for that, but sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you never know what you're going to talk yeah. about on this show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so the, anyway, that was cool. Y'all look for the um, well, the quest for Texas best winners from this year. But also, if you see that on any past products, because a lot of them, they're not an H E B yet. But H E B is sort of like said, man, you're really good, and we want to carry you. But you know, you, you a little bit of coaching so they can get to that level. Because when you're an H, once you're in HEB shelves, that's kind of another ball game. Oh, you better made it. You better have your production line up because if you're a hit and you're not ready, it could crush <laughs> you. So anyway, oh, man. that's what they do. Okay, so the next segment. Meanwhile, in Texas, while you've been listening to this podcast, lots of stuff's been going on in the Lone Star State. This is Meanwhile in Texas. All right, uh, Daniel, what'd you find for me? I tell you what, it's not hard to find crazy stuff in Texas. I mean, it's probably much easier if you're like in Florida or yeah. some other states, <laughs> but you could just look around and find things like, uh, you know, a monkey attack, a dog attack, <laughs> rescue. What? what? Uh, yeah, right, so like me. this happened in August uh, out in Houston. Uh, it says that police officers were called to a scene where a monkey was underneath somebody's car and they're like well where did the monkey come from well they don't know okay um wild roaming monkey but the monkey had been trying to attack people and then a dog <laughs> attacked the monkey and now the monkey is somewhat injured and hiding under a vehicle and welcome to texas welcome to texas welcome okay to houston let me back I, okay there's a monkey under a car that's biting people's ankles yeah i did here's the thing like you like, look up these stories and you're just like i need more information it's just like they don't have no it. more details have been released <laughs> well it's kind of like, like i mean what else do you want to know is a monkey yeah, under it's a, car it's a monkey, monkey in your car what do you uh but the monkey was injured from a previous dog attack no from the the dog it tried to attack a dog and the dog attacked yeah the well, yeah and, dog you know. versus monkey yeah and that depends on monkey depends on the dog yeah that's true all right <laughs> here we go right dog versus monkey your typical like Monkey that Ross had in Friends, right? That's your your. I like to think that your monkey, whatever breed that is, not a chimpanzee yeah. or an orangutan. It's your standard pet monkey versus. Yeah, what are, what are the black and white monkeys called? Oh, uh, well, not nah, oh uh, gibbons, gibbon. No, no, eh. no, gibbons are huge. Yeah, that's right. Couldn't tell oh, you, brother. Gosh, I can't. Remember. Couldn't tell you. Off the top of my head. Uh, your friends monkey. Yeah. Your Ross friends Ross monkey. monkey. Ross monkey, a, a Russell, a Russell, <laughs> Russell's monkey uh, versus um, 30 pound stray dog. Who wins? Dog. Yeah, dog wins that one. But the, Although the monkey, monkey climbs. Much smarter. And it's smarter. So, but, I, but hmm. let's assume the monkey's not just trying to get away because I think if monkey wants to get away, monkey's gone. But let's sure. say monkey's got a little fight in him. Monkey wants this battle. He can make it happen. You think? Well, I, monkey can use tools. I was going to say monkey could pick up sticks. Yeah. Monkey could um, uh, launch an aerial attack. You know, like dog can't do that. Monkeys like to throw poop. Oh, oh, oh. blinding. Blind the <laughs> eyes, then you got free reign. We've gone uh, way down a rabbit hole here. I mean, uh, but hey, it's great clickbait. Dog versus monkey. <laughs> it was for me because I was <laughs> yeah. like, what's happening you, in Texas? You know. Oh, monkey under car right. getting attacked by dog. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> what, what I, I don't know. I am curious what people we, think. I need dog to versus find more about this. Yeah, I do need more details <laughs> on that one. It's kind of monkey, kind released. of dog breed. We'll we'll know. All right, I've got more details on this one, and they're terrifying, okay. Daniel. All right, so this past month, a woman in Silsby. She seems super sweet. She's in her upper sixties. She is mowing a rental property that she has in East Texas. So Silsby's around Beaumont. She's on a riding tractor mowing a lawn. All right. She's kind of just probably sweating. It's a really hot afternoon. What falls out of the sky? Bam. A snake. No. A venomous snake. What? Daniel falls out of the sky, lands on her arm. All right. So she 
riding lawnmower looks down. There's a snake wrapping around her arm. This snake is freaked out because it just fell out of the sky. It starts to squeeze her arm and not only that, strike at her face. So she's trying to get away from a snake that is attached to her arm. It's spitting venom on her glasses. It breaks one of the lenses as she's trying to separate her face from this snake. Uh, Then you go, okay, so why did a snake fall from the sky? And is something maybe responsible for that? Yes, there was a hawk that was trying to eat its lunch, dropped the snake, and now he's coming back. So she's fighting the snake. Then all of a sudden, this red-tailed hawk comes down (laughs) to reclaim its lunch, (laughs) grabs the snake, meanwhile tearing the flesh from her arm, and starts yanking the snake away from her. Snake... Still biting at face, hawk flapping wings in face. She, she, the hawk leaves to make another pass. She can't get the snake off, has no idea what to do. Hawk comes back three or four times until it finally gets the snake off her arm and flies away to eat its lunch. She looks down. <laughs> oh, the lawnmower's been putting along the whole time. Moving lawnmower, snake attack, oh hawk gosh. attack, chaos. Did she get bit too? Uh, so the uh, they she posted a picture of her arm. It's terrible. Like it looks, it looks like she put it through a meat grinder. Um, they she rushes to the hospital, thinking, "I'm about to meet Jesus. This is it. I've been bit by a venomous snake. Surely you bit me somewhere." But no, they can't find it. It, it never connected. That was all from the hawk. Just uh, yeah, I think it was from the hawk and the bruises from the snake. Like you've got to be titties. kidding this, me. This is like this is a nightmare is a, times twelve. It's a Ben Stiller movie. This, this is a Ben. What is exactly what this is? Oh man! I, but like, it's just a snake falling out of the sky. No one's safe. If there's going to be people out there who literally have nightmares after hearing this of yeah. snakes falling from the sky. But you know that is something that hawks and eagles do, though. I've heard yeah. of this, but what are yeah. the odds? Uh, what that are the odds it's going to land on your arm? Yes. Oh, man. So anyway, our sweet Peggy is going to make a full recovery. That's good to hear. (laughs) But our 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 minds and imaginations will not. Uh, They can't ID the snake. She she's pretty sure it was venomous. Who knows? Non venomous snakes also uh, snap. Sure. Um, You know, you can get pretty tore up by a non venomous snake. It's just, you know, it's going to leave lacerations and cuts. But the. no, no evidence. She said there's venom left on her eyeglasses, which a non-venomous snake's not going to have that. We had a GoPro out in Sweetwater that got struck by a rattlesnake, and it there was snake venom all and over. And it crystallized. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very we, quickly. we didn't know how to get it off, so we just left it in the truck bed. And it, yeah, it did. It didn't take long. And I remember being terrified of that, because like if I handled it and I had a cut on my finger, like, what does that mean? Am I going to the hospital? Like, I... I don't know, but I do remember we saw them, like, if you put uh, snake venom into blood, you have something that's like a liquid, uh, what what would you call it? it? Like, it's just, it's fluid. It's liquid. Yeah. And it turns to almost like jello. Ugh. Just from adding the venom, venom to, to the it. blood, it congeals. That's creepy. So, I was terrified. I didn't know how to touch it. So, I, like, got a hazmat suit on, <laughs> hose the GoPro down with a water hose. Um, yeah, who knows? So... Anyway, this is ter- terrifying. Absolutely terrifying story. Oof. All right. So moving on from <laughs> yeah, how do you move dogs, on from monkeys, that? snakes, and hawks, uh, let's jump into the Texas Music Minute. <laughs> um, all right. So this is where we bring y'all an artist that maybe y'all have heard of, maybe you haven't, but one that's got new music, maybe old music. We're just trying to shine light on somebody. But this is a new music one uh, from the son of Willie Nelson. So Lucas Nelson. Um, there's a recent article that I read that said, we'll never lose Willie as long as Lucas stays alive. Because if you hear Lucas, oh, okay. gotcha. you will hear the voice of Willie Nelson it's in true. his singing. It's true. So Lucas Nelson, he was born in Austin, um, but kind of raised between Austin and Hawaii. Uh, and now he has a band called Promise of the Real. Uh, he, he started playing with his dad at the age of 13. He played guitar with him. And uh, this is this, the list of instruments Lucas plays. Guitar, banjo, mandolin, harmonica, ukulele, and piano. 
Oh my gosh. Have you ever felt untalented I, before? You know, I can my play gosh. a couple of those. <laughs> I'm going to put knee to the list so that I play the same <laughs> instrument. Um, all right, so his band, though, is called Lucas Nelson and the Promise of the Real. It's an eclectic mix. It's kind of rock, kind of country. Lucas does not sound like a mimic of Willie Nelson. He sounds like some kind of hybrid. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit, to me, it's reminiscent of like Neil Young and Willie Nelson together, but it's a very distinctive voice. This July, he released an album, or the band released an album, Sticks and Stones, and this is their song, All Four Winds. So if you've never heard of Lucas Nelson, uh, here you go. It's a good, it's a good jam. Um, it's crazy. You hear his voice and you hear Willie Nelson, but yeah, he's his, his own thing. He's his own thing. But you know, if you heard it without knowing his last name, you might go, eh, it kind of sounds like Willie. Yeah. You know, he's got a good, he's got that, ah, that vibrato uh -huh. thing vibrato. that Willie does. And uh, I mean, he's super talented. I've got, to, I got introduced to him. Um, I don't know, five years ago or so, went to an ACL taping with him and was yeah. just, I didn't know much, just, I'm going to go, Lucas Nelson, maybe Willie will show up. Willie did not show up, but the concert was awesome. Yeah. He's good. Oh, I bet. He, he's I very, bet. very good. So y'all go look up his album, Sticks and Stones. It's great. It's great jams. He's got a song that, uh, hit really big off of this album. I didn't play it cause it's so popular. It's with Lainey Wilson though. It's a duet. With yeah. With Lainey Wilson's like super popular right now, uh, was on Yellowstone, all kinds of stuff. And so that song has catapulted him to another level, too. All right. So that was your Texas Music Minute. And now, one of our favorite sections, questions from the back seat. Are we there yet? Hey, can you pass me the snacks? Oh, uh, when are we going to stop? I got to go. Okay. Um, this question comes from Lisa Hart, and it's we're sticking with a the football theme on this first one. She says, who has the best football mascot in Texas? And I knew some straight off the bat. There's some fun ones. And I'm a big fan of schools that pick non-traditional mascots. Yeah. Because, uh, you, you know... Mean, so not an animal. Take yeah. Animals well, out. no, no, no. Animals are totally in play. It just can't be uh, the most popular ones. And so this led me down another uh, rabbit hole into what are the most popular mascots. And you could probably name some of them. A longhorn, a bear, a... Uh, I, think, I think Texas high schools. Oh, high schools. Yeah, Texas high schools. <laughs> okay, high schools. Panthers, high schools. Panthers, Panthers, <laughs> Panthers. <laughs> yeah. All cats. Panthers. Uh, okay, Bulldogs. Okay, here, here are the top three. <laughs> there are 66 high schools who are the Tigers. Oh, my there gosh. There are 87 high schools who are the Bulldogs. There are 88 high schools who are the Eagles. So the most common mascot is the Eagles. It's the Eagles. Yeah, super boring. So I would think Panthers yeah. would be up there. Love my Georgetown Eagles, but man, we could have found a better mascot. Okay. I mean, pretty boring. So I'm not going to pick any of those because they're too common. Sure. Best mascots in Texas. I got a few. Do you? Oh, gosh. I So we're talking high school. I don't know. I, I mean, know. first and foremost, Hutto Hippos. Now, Gotta that one's be. a cool story. That's a cool story, too. Yeah. Now, is tell. it true? Do I don't know. I don't Supposedly, know. there was a circus train that was going through town. Uh -huh. I think it had some sort of accident, and a hippo got loose right. in that area. 
and it stuck with the history of the town, and they decided we're going to name this the uh, team the Hutto Hippos. Hutto Hippos. Yeah, supposedly it got off the train, and it lodged itself in a local, like, water hole. In a water hole. hole or something. And they couldn't it's get like it it's out. It's not getting out. And the whole train stopped, like, well, you got to get this hippo out. You and don't so move a they, hippo. I know. No, you don't. <laughs> deadliest animal in Africa. One of the deadliest in the world. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Hutto Hippos are up there. It's a great name. They're, uh, this is two that are both cyclones. We have the Winters Blizzards. Ooh, okay. In Winters, Texas. They had to go oh, with the Winters. Yeah, they had yeah, to go absolutely. with a, a cold theme. Winter then, is coming. And Amarillo. <laughs> I'm sure that was on one of those oh, things where they you. ran out, you know, the paper that the team runs out of. Uh, and then in Amarillo, you have the Amarillo Sandies, which is a sandstorm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a big dust devil. <laughs> um, and then in the uh, category of mythical beasts, some of my favorites, New Braunfels, unicorns. I was told the only unicorns in the country. I believe it. There's their you hand signal. They're... You make a yeah, fist, then you put your the pinky, pinky up, up, and then stick it on your head. Oh, how you, do you I think? How do you think they really feel about that, though? I love it. I think it's awesome. You, you got to go all in. I mean, it's like, okay, are we gonna? Are we gonna? Are we gonna are we doing? Are this? we doing this? We do, really? Okay, fine. We're doing it. Hey, unicorns, power, mythical beasts. Sure, they, they brought like Lisa Frank screwed them up because now they're like <laughs> covered in rainbows. That's what I mean. And dancing, but like. The, you, the actual mythical Dude, beast. It's a freaking horse with a horn. That's awesome. Yeah, that should Just, be awesome. Yeah, another level. And then this is another one, another mythical animal, the Atasca Wampus Cats. Wampus What cats. is a Wampus Cat? I knew it didn't exist, so I had to look it up. But what okay. is a Wampus Cat? In American folklore, a Wampus Cat is a cat, is described as being cat-like, but sort of varies. They're said to have green eyes, mythical powers, all, also an amphibious panther. Can live in land and water. In, <laughs> uh, in Cherokee legend, it's a woman who hid under a cat pelt to watch a sacred ceremony. When they found her, they cursed her to be trapped as a wampus cat for the rest of her life. Ouch. Uh, so, mythical powers. It's kind of like a liger bred for its skills and magic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Perfect. So, no, that, we, we have a chupacabra too, right? I don't know. No, there is no chupacabra. I guess Quero doesn't have that. They're Quero, the gobblers. The gobble because it's all the turkey. Yes, related. which is also okay. should be on the list of the best ones. Be. The gobblers be. are up there. Uh, there's one, the Pied Pipers, I think. You know, <laughs> like the Plowboys, the Mason Punchers. There's some good ones, and I know it's hard to break away after a school's been established with a mascot. Um, but like, you should start a petition. Yeah, come up with something fun. We'll do something unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah yes come on eagles George's and yeah. panthers georgetown washington's <laughs> yeah, but, the, but the other school is already the patriots the george east east view but anyway come up with something fun like zephyr is the bulldogs there that should be the zephyr zebras there's just no doubt about it oh yeah so easily all right okay so those are my favorite uh mascots in texas <laughs> there's another question from gabriel agare agary who has the coldest beer in Texas? Who? Who? And so I was like, well, I mean, about is that a go? contest? Is this yeah, a race for the bottom of the temperature, the thermometer? So I'm like, I, I, I've seen many bars advertise the coldest beer in Texas. And so I'm like, that's not just like we're the best honky tonk in Texas, right? That's subjective. Whether or not you have the coldest beer in Texas, that's an objective fact. That's what you're so, proclaiming. Yeah, you're you're claiming something that could be proven or disproven. It's yeah. a true fact of science. So I'm looking at. So where does beer freeze? I can tell you, it's not 32 degrees because there's alcohol in this it. This is true. So water freezes at 32 degrees, but anytime you add alcohol, uh, the temperature, the freezing temp drops. Yeah, tremendously. Okay, so but there's not beer, a ton of alcohol in beer. No, no, no. Like four percent, maybe. Yeah. So if your beer has between 4 and 6% alcohol. 28 degrees is where it freezes. All right. So these coldest degrees. beer in Texas, uh, either they're lying or they're locked in at 28 degrees. 28. And that's it. It don't, it don't get no colder. Well, no, it can't be 28 because then it's frozen. It has yeah, to be that's like true. 28.2, 28.1. So want y'all should walk in there and ask them, okay, let me see your coolers. What are they set at? Mm -hmm. They're not going to know. They're no. not going to know. No. So uh, that is, and of course, if you're talking about the bigger beers that are 8%, that's going to be even lower. It is. 
So you could advertise the coldest IPA in Texas. <laughs> you just got to keep it in a different cooler. Yeah. This, this sounds like anyway, just some guy asking, this hey, was where can Bill, I get a good beer? Bill Nye the Science Guy moment where right. I started to look at, this. we're going to do a day tripper uh, experiment. <laughs> we need to buy a couple thousands of dollar coolers. Um, all right. Here's uh, another question. This came in from Catherine Clapner. She said, y'all should do an episode. Have you ever thought of an episode on a food drive to Marfa? A food which drive to which Marfa. actually I had kind of thought about, not Marfa specifically, but it, it, this question piqued my interest because I wanted to know what people thought about like road trip episodes. It's not just about the destination, it's the journey to get there. So okay. let's well, say like Route 66 was like, kind of. Kind of, yeah, we had a start and a finish. And I guess this would be something. It's like, hey, we're going to drive to El Paso. From San Antonio to El Paso in a day. Sure. It'll take a whole day. <laughs> but like, we're going to drive there because a lot of people make that trip. And rather than just like a single town, we'll show y'all stuff along the way. Do you think that would be the drive to El Paso? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Would those episodes be more popular than just a town? More popular? I don't know. But I think there's something there. Something there. Because... Even us, like we've made so many day trips when we go, you know, a different cardinal direction. We know typically the places we want to stop, whether it's yeah. something as simple as a Bucky's or, you know, it, wh whatever. Name the name yeah. the spot. Uh, when we're when we're going north and we're going to go through the area of like West Texas. Yeah. Not West Texas, but West. West. The city. West, West comma Texas. West comma Texas. Like we know where we're going to go and get some kolaches. Yeah. Uh, and that's just kind of us because we've got patterns and we've like found sure. stuff that we like. So yeah, why not share some of this information with people? It's true. It's true. I, I could see an episode out of that. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Well, maybe maybe we'll consider it. But you got to find. It's not a day one. trip though. It's a it's a story of a day's journey. You know. Yeah. And like if the idea is like we're gonna drive to Marfa today and we're leaving Austin and then it's like I don't know, you're eating hey, barbecue. Okay, that's the other problem though. Not everybody's leaving from the same spot. I know. So that, that's, that's where that's it can get tricky. A common start. You got a common destination, but not a common origin. Sure. Now, when you are driving West Tech out to West Texas, uh, everybody's pretty much going the same way. Yeah, right. So I mean, once you get Fort Stockton, there's not a whole <laughs> lot of difference. Not a lot of options in the way you're going. All right, and then one. Uh, so maybe maybe we should. I'd love to know what y'all think. Leave a comment Good if y'all like to see that. Um, this is a a question from somebody. It said. Why do y'all have the best looking crew in all of TV? Heck yeah. Uh, sent by one <laughs> Jordan Meese. Wait, so, what? I, <laughs> come on. That's for real. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, she yes, wrote this. Yes. That's Daniel's wife. So, uh, uh, but I don't think she was talking about you. She's probably talking about me and John Mark and all of us. I'm just kidding. Your wife's good sport. That's funny. You shouldn't have told me that. Uh, like, of course, yeah, of course yeah, my yeah, wife's yeah. going to say that. Shout out, Jordan. Uh, good question. Thanks, babe. I love you. All right. So let's move into <laughs> our final segment. Folks who just need to get something off their chest. Hey, Day Tripper. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, my goodness. It's the Day Tripper. We love your show. Uh, Okay. This is called Fan Rants and Musings, and this is a comment left on Brownsville. We like some good ones, some bad ones in here. This is a good one. It says, as a transplant from Hawaii, um, shout out to Hawaii. We are praying for the fires in Maui and all the people there. So uh, that's a terrible tragedy, and we all are in our thoughts and prayers. But, okay, she's a transplant from Hawaii to Texas. I love watching your videos. I I hated living here for years, but I began to embrace it. And you're, with your videos, I now realize there's so much more to love about Texas. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, all right. That's awesome. I don't know where she lives, but if you move to, say, Colleen from Hawaii, it's going to be a little different. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but we're here to help you see that there's wonderful stuff in every corner of Texas. Absolutely. The, so, the other thing love, is, love Hawaii coming. is not... That big, no. Texas is huge, so it's true. you have to get break out of the mindset of I could drive, you know, just around the bend, and there's some amazing view or something awesome. You might have to drive a little bit to get where there's something great to do. It yeah. could also be in your backyard, and you just don't know it. True, very so, true. Do some research. Yeah, uh, watch more videos. Find this stuff out. There's tons of day trips out there, and that's why we're here. Every direction. That's right. Every direction. 
Okay, this is one. Um, me and Edward Matthews, 2061, have lots of differences of opinion. He leaves this on one of our YouTube videos. Oh, that food is so disgusting. No wonder the Texas obesity rate is over 30%. Way to be responsible adults. <laughs> what? Gross. Ugh. Ugh. Barbecue and chicken fried steak. Ugh. Gross. Look, all right. We, do we eat more than we should? Maybe. I don't know. You know, people are living their life, doing what they do. This guy's got a problem with us, Daniel. Okay. He's Sounds saying, good. He's saying we're a bunch of fat slops. Does he not know how to uh, adults. eat, like, small amounts of food? You, like, can, you don't have to eat it all. You don't have to eat it all. Yeah, no way. No way. He's got. He's just got a problem. I guess so. I think he's just uh, uh, an angry vegan. And he needs to eat more meat. <laughs> Maybe calm him down a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Oh, wow. There's plenty of those out there. Some really nice vegans, too. But Hey, I've had some great ones. vegan food. Yeah, I, we I, have. Don't, I don't hate on any kind of food. Like, have. There's no, great stuff everywhere. Delicious food is delicious food. Doesn't yeah. have to have meat in it. Doesn't have to be fried. Uh, no, not uh, at all. But if it is, it might be better. No, I'm just all right. This, this last lady has a problem with my jeans. <laughs> love the show. So many fun facts about town. Uh, we love the fact that it's on YouTube. Um, Chet is great. Makes all the towns sound interesting. The one thing I do need to bring to his attention. Oh, Come my. on. His jeans. The way they sit on his boots. Skinny style jeans over boots. Not a good look, bro. Go boot cut. Thanks. Looking forward to more. Daisy Gardner. We almost have the same last name, just not quite. It's true, though. No, she, she's got the D. <laughs> I've made some skinny jean mistakes <laughs> in my life. I have. Uh, but, like, that's jeans nowadays are getting skinnier and skinnier. Hey. Plenty, you know, and this, this is the problem. I don't think about what shoes I'm going to wear before I put my jeans on. I, I put you my, were so much better than you used to be. I, I, I think the biggest problem is, and people don't think about this, but once we film something, it's now etched in stone. Oh, forever. Like the way you look, what you wore, how you dress. Yeah. Uh, if you gained a little weight, if you lost a little, a little weight, weight, it's like sure. you know, I should know. Um, <laughs> but it's like those things are that way forever. And so when we are now putting old episodes on YouTube for everybody, we're getting back into your skinny jean phase. Oh, and the skinny jean phase. Y'all just hang tough. The uh, soul patch phase will be <laughs> soul patch is coming <laughs> back in the baggy jeans. Oh, the baggy jeans. I did. I, I mean, had Waco. Them. Waco uh, is a great example yeah. of Waco 1 to Waco 2, oh, man. you know, 10 years later. Totally. Totally. Um, so much fun. Hey, that's that's part of... Uh, part, part of... We're, part we're of aging with y'all. We are. And some of it's graceful, some of it's not. <laughs> so we just... We're getting a few more grays on the beard. Are, oh, yeah. yeah Losing yeah. This, some hair up This here. face has seen quite a few miles now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's part of the job. Part of the gig, yep. Uh, all right, guys. So thank y'all for the comments, even the bad ones. We do love y'all. Um, y'all remember to go and check out the Collin County History Museum. Um, really cool spot. You learn a lot about history and the cool people that are from Collin County. It gets you excited about Paris in 2024. Um, y'all, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review. It helps a ton. And this is where... Oh, shout out to Alex Fort over here. Hey. Uh, our producer mixing up the jazziness of this. And uh, hey, it, say one of the things, sorry. Uh, check out our new hats, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, These yeah. things yeah, are yeah, amazing. Yeah. Got some awesome hats in the store. Grandpa, Go check them out. Grandpa rope style hats. Vicon like Dios. Day Tripper. Heck yeah. We're we always got new stuff in the store. So y'all come uh, check it out. Check us out here in Georgetown or online at thedaytripper.com. All right, y'all. All right. Peace and bye, Condios, amigos. <laughs>